what's our plan for proving that Goodstein's theorem can't be proven from the axioms of PA plus? Usually the way we define a proof from a system of axioms is that it's a series of steps, and each step is supposed to be one of our axioms, or it's justified by an inference rule. There are different systems of inference rules for first order logic, and since the details aren't that important for us, rather than pick one, I'll just let you assume we're working with whatever your favorite version is, or if you don't have a favorite, just trust there is some reasonable system of rules. And it probably has things like, if at a previous step we proved phi, and then at a different previous step we proved psi, then there's a rule that says we can now conclude phi and psi. And there are other rules like that. But a proof in this system is probably a big line of statements, just a plain list, which isn't very easy to work with. So in proof theory, we usually prefer different proof systems, which do more to reflect the structure of the proof. So what we're going to do is define a formal system, which I'll call Z infinity, Z for the integers, and infinity, because it's actually an infinitary system. It's going to have a rule with infinitely many premises. That's not what a conventional proof system does. Proof systems are usually supposed to be finite things, but this will be the convenient system for us to work with. To help distinguish the way that Z infinity is not exactly a proof system, I like to use the word deduction for things that we do in Z infinity. Z infinity is really a formal mathematical structure made of rules, and we'll talk about whether or not we can deduce formulas using the rules of Z infinity, and then we'll prove, using ordinary mathematical reasoning, facts about the deductions of Z infinity. Like a lot of the systems that proof theorists like, Z infinity is branching. A deduction is a tree rather than a list. So one rule will be if we deduce phi and we deduce psi, then we can combine those deductions with a rule that says we can also deduce phi and psi. And we write that like this with a line, the premises are above the line, the conclusion is below, and we think of it like a tree. Phi and psi is at the root of this tree and it has two branches, one giving the deduction of phi and a different one giving the deduction of psi. I'll define Z infinity more exactly later, but I'll mention one other rule right now. The infinite rule, the thing that gives us that infinity, will be one that says, when we want to deduce for all x phi, we'll have infinitely many branches, one for each natural number n. And in the nth branch, we're supposed to deduce phi of x replaced by n. This is sometimes called the omega rule. It says that the way you deduce for all x is you deduce phi of 0, and phi of 1, and phi of 2, and if you've deduced it for every n, you've proven it. This isn't a practical proof rule for doing ordinary mathematics, because it just pushes off the question of where do these proofs of phi of n come from? How do I know I have all of them? You'd need something else, an induction or something, to produce them. But for the formal definition of Z infinity, there's nothing wrong with saying this is one of our rules. In addition to being infinitary, Z infinity will look a little different from more traditional proof systems in some other ways. Instead of deducing formulas, Z infinity deduces finite multisets of sentences. Sentences, so no free variables. Sets, so we don't always deduce one sentence at a time. Sometimes we work with sets of sentences, and we'll say more about that with what that means when we introduce Z infinity formally. And multisets, which means we can have multiple copies of the same sentence, and we distinguish between is there one copy, is there two copies, is there six copies. Multisets instead of sets is a bookkeeping thing. It's just going to be easier to keep track of what's going on that way. This feature where we're deducing sets or multisets rather than single formulas comes up a lot in proof theory. These multisets are called sequence, similar to the world word sequence. And proof systems based on these are called sequent calculi. In other proof systems, the sequence might be sets, or they might be actual sequences with an order. Uh, sometimes they're two-sided, so there might be a pair, one on the left and one on the right. For us, a sequence is a single multiset. 
In fact, the system Z infinity we're going to introduce is much too powerful because of that infinitary rule. It's actually going to deduce every true statement about the natural numbers, certainly including Gutstein's theorem. So we're going to define a restriction. We're going to put bounds on our deductions. You can think of this as making up for the proof system having an infinitary rule. Yeah, we have infinitely branching trees where for every n we have a deduction of phi of n, but having a bound will tell us the deduction of phi of n is not too complicated as a function of n. So instead of requiring that deductions be finite, which is what we would usually do, we're allowing deductions to be infinite, but requiring that they be simple, where simple means they have ordinal bounds of a certain kind. And when we restrict ourselves to bounded z-infinity deductions, we can no longer deduce all true facts. We'll show that whenever we have a proof of a sentence sigma in PA+, plus, we have a bounded deduction of sigma in z-infinity. So we can't deduce everything in a bounded way, but we can deduce anything we could prove in PA+. Plus. We're then going to define an even more restricted kind of deduction, which we'll call cut-free deductions. Formally, one of the rules of z-infinity is just called the cut rule. So being cut-free means the deduction doesn't use this cut rule. But what we'll see is that cut-free deductions have a very nice structure. In particular, we'll prove that there can't be a bounded, cut-free deduction of Goodstein's theorem. Our bounds are going to be related to the fast-growing functions, so this proof is going to fall right out of that. A bounded, cut-free deduction can't grow too quickly. But a cut-free deduction of Goodstein's theorem has to grow as fast as the Goodstein function. The final step will be describing a way of transforming deductions in z-infinity into cut-free deductions. This transformation is going to be by far the hardest thing we've done. It's also the point of all this, the whole benefit of taking ordinary proofs and putting them in this formal system of deductions is so that we can transform them in ways that bring out the structure of the deduction. And that will be our proof. If we could prove Goodstein's theorem in PA+, plus, we could give a bounded z-infinity deduction of Goodstein's theorem, and then we could also give a bounded cut-free deduction of Goodstein's theorem, and we're going to show that that's impossible.